I've got one item okay, under old go. business, Mr. Chairman, if you may. And, and again, I, I brought up um, that I wanted to respond to uh, Mr. Rice's article uh, in the paper on Friday. And uh, I, I, have, I have here, and it's highlighted in red, is um, the actual summons in a civil action. And uh, this, vote has, this board has voted four to one after six years and, and since 1933 to have a discussion. Um, uh, with the state with in the court system one of the three legs of government there's the judicial there's the legislative and there's the executive and uh, that's what this board has voted on and again public service um, is uh, sometimes difficult and uh, it's always difficult especially in this day and age and uh, I've served six years I've done this um, um, in another town for three years I've been chairman in two different towns uh, I started my public service and sworn service uh, as a 19-year-old. It's remained continuous and con continuous and concurrent um, through every decade of my life. Uh, it's been sworn service, which is different than a service where you might just want to leave. Uh, I have served in this town now for six years, and I'm wrapping up, and it's been a privilege to serve. Uh, and I was surprised by um, the article, um, Inside Politics by uh, Citizen Rice in this town on Friday. Um, I have served as chair and I was relieved as chair um, by uh, selectmen uh, on this board. Uh, sat right where you sat, Mr. Chairman, and uh, um, took my medicine and continued to serve. They're one of the finest uh, servants this town has ever had, both at the state and uh, that sat right here, resigned that very night and brought his signature uh, resignation in the next. And uh, rightfully so, he called, um, he called things a circus, and I thought that that was uh, um, gratuitous. I thought it was worse than that. But I uh, continued to serve. I was uh, reassigned or reelected as chairman, served. You folks came aboard. Um, and uh, we've, we've moved the change. We've done a good job, um, a real good job collectively. Uh, this, this tort issue, for some reason, um, people don't respect uh, the four to one decision of the board. For some reason, they continue to fight it. Uh, the governor has called me a Pauline. I've been called a fool here at this board. Um, and these things happen. Um, we're only human. Um, but uh, as, as we move on and we open this, this editorial um, from March 2nd, um, I, ca I can take my lumps. Um, as I said, I've served with uh, Richie Sawyer uh, 30 years ago. And, um, but this, this uh, this inside politics from, from uh, Rice uh, needs to be addressed. And uh, it, it really is below the pale, and uh, I, I just can't distance myself enough from it. And if you bring up uh, Webster's Dictionary and you look at fascism, uh, it's the forcible suppression of opposition. Um, his his uh, manifesto, his Stalinesque manifesto that um, it really is a manifesto. It's half the paper, um, and it's, it's hard to have the energy to complete the whole thing. Uh, he's a master of the universe. Um, and forget what he says about me. I'm, I'm privileged uh, to be criticized by a man of this caliber. And if Mr. Rice were to uh, support me, uh, I would uh, disavow his support, and I would, uh, I would turn away from it. And I, I can do that on my own. Um, but he gets into um, Mindy Mesmer regarding Coakley. We have paid $15,000 for Dr. Ballestero to support our efforts here. We have a 66 million gallon well that is shut down. And uh, Mr. Rice, who is the master of the universe on everything, um, asserts, um, because I guess he is uh, a scientist from UNH that uh, we paid $15,000 for that actually taught the EPA head administrator in Boston but he says it has no effect on Hampton or its water supply. I guess we just shut down 66 million gallon wells for nothing. And going on, he, he, um, he has plenty to say about me, um, but his misogyny in, in addition to this, this borderline fascism that he executes, and that's right out of Webster's, is uh, falling right in line with Bean's fabrications and fantasies Selectman Regina Barnes has made an unbelievable claim. And so he's, 
misogynist in, in that respect, which is the attacking of women, particularly. And here it is right in the paper, um, falling right in line. He's attacking um, Selectman Barnes, uh, who very well will probably, in accordance with custom, be the next chair of this body um, because she's not up for re-election and she's in, she's in the pipeline for that. So I, I, I turn away from that and again um, uh, condemn that in the a, in a most possible uh, vigorous way. And then there were people in here this evening, uh, some of whom I have served with before, two of them that voted to remove me as chair that I have served with. I have never called them a fool in public. I have never called them appalling in public. I served with them. We voted on uh, different issues, and that's what I signed up for. But I have never uh, stooped to that level publicly, um, as others have towards uh, uh, other board members or representatives in this state. And he goes on to say in this, again, attacking a woman um, in a misogynist fashion, Ms. Woolsey and Jones. Candidates Woolsey and Jones both favor the lawsuit perhaps because it will give them numerous opportunities to climb on their soapbox and blame the state for everything that they fail to do. And again, uh, I go to the definition of fascism out of Webster's and it's the forcible suppression of opposition. And I would say to those that are, that are running for selectmen, including you, Mr. Chairman, that have, have sought to run again, and everybody that's on this board, not to succumb to the bullying of rice, not succumb to the personal attacks, and not to take that low road, and to support the democratic process, and to disavow those tactics and, and speak up when they happen. And it's very difficult for people um, to run for public office uh, in, the, in the easiest sense of the word, just to put their name on a ballot and devote the time. And then when you have um, this insanity that Rice has put out, this misogynist, fascist insanity, attacking women and attacking public services, calling fantasies, bomb throwers. Um, that is not what Hampton's about. I don't know where he went to college. I know where I went to college. That's the University of New Hampshire. And uh, I never learned that in school. I didn't learn that at Winnicott. I didn't learn that at uh, uh, Hampton Junior High. I didn't learn it, learn it in Mendham Junior High School in New Jersey. I didn't learn it in Hingham Public Schools, one through eight, where Dick Nichols went. I didn't learn it in 31 years in the Coast Guard and the Marine Corps. I didn't learn it as a chairman of the board in Milton, New Hampshire. I certainly didn't learn it on this board, and you haven't heard it here from me. And so I wanted to share that, and I would say to people not to be intimidated, um, those that are running and, and uh, succumb to this rant uh, from Rice, that was uh, recently executed. And uh, I, w I will leave it at that. And uh, I don't want to be around Mr. Rice. I don't want to hear what he has to say. I don't want to breathe the same air. I don't want to be in the same room with him. And he does not represent Hampton. Uh, and I cannot be more emphatic about that. And I'm not calling him a fool. I'm not calling him appalling. I have referenced a Webster's dictionary term that describes fascism described his behavior and misogyny is if you look it up uh, an attacking of women and a devaluing of them and he's attacking two women uh, in the paper this weekend I am uh, the father of two daughters I am the father of four granddaughters and uh, I don't particularly like it when uh, old men attack women especially publicly it uh, diminishes their their uh, their ability to lead effectively and uh, it's a black mark on uh, Hampton uh, that he has offered. And then to say that he is a former this and a former that and a former this and the master of the universe. And uh, I'll conclude my remarks on that. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I would wish all those that, that are running for selectmen, including you, Mr. Chairman, uh, the best of luck in the election. Thank you. Um, I would like to say something on that note because I actually was informed of that editorial and I went on and I looked at it myself and I must have been so upset by the time I got to that part of the article I didn't even read my, whole, my own name in the article because I was upset of how Selectman Bean's efforts were being portrayed in that editorial. I don't really care what Fred Rice has to 
think about the lawsuit. I don't really care what precinct commissioners have to say about it. I don't really care about what the state has to say about it. All I know is Selectman Beans has worked on it for six years, and I came in here, and I immediately started looking at the same thing that I'm sure he had already studied, and I immediately saw it right away. Money's flying out of here year after year, and we get, what, 1.5, 1.6 million back, everything put together? Not right. Not doesn't make sense. And I don't want to be in a room with Fred Rice. I don't want to be in a room with anyone that tries to demean some, an elected official who's actually doing their job for their hometown. And um, yeah, what you said about degrading women, I mean, personally myself, I don't really care what he has to say about me, but uh, I think that's awful. And I think people need to remember that the key word is former. And I would uh, add one more thing, Mr. Um, Chairman. On March 2nd, 2018, at 142957, I received an email from uh, one of Hampton's uh, finest citizens, and finest among the finest citizens in this country. And it was from, uh, it is from a uh, uh, former head of a VSO. And for many people that uh, don't serve in the military, and there's a lot of them that don't, uh, it's a veteran service organization, and it's in this town. And he's a family man, and he is a cultural icon. He is a father, a grandfather. Uh, he is a, a warrior. He is a U.S. Marine. And Fred Rice called him up last month. And uh, this, this person uh, has, he says, Phil, just wanted, to you know, wanted you to know that I am disgusted with Fred. He called me a month ago looking for any info I might have on you. And I won't, I won't say about what else is in this email, but when you talk about the suppression of opposing opinion, and you read that article, and then you combine it with somebody making phone calls, making phone calls to heads of public service organizations and veterans organizations uh, in this town to find dirt on them, uh, again, I don't want to be in the same room as, room as Fred Rice. I never want to speak to Fred Rice. Uh, I don't want to be around his uh, snooping J. Edgar Hoover ways. I don't want to be around anybody that's looking for dirt on anybody. And again, I've, uh, I've taken some uh, hits here because that's what you do when you serve. And I stood here and uh, I served and I showed up for every single meeting uh, after I was relieved. But again, um, this, this uh, was from one of the leading citizens in New Hampshire, or in New Hampshire, and in this town. And, so, and he concludes, "If there's anything you need to do, do not hesitate to ask." And that that is what uh, Mr. Rice is all about. He's a misogynist in his in his uh, writings. Uh, he's a fascist in his writings, and he's trying to oppress candidacies. And he's calling up people uh, as they would do in the Kremlin, as Mr. Putin might, and uh, asking if there any dirt on Selectman Representative Bean, former Lieutenant Colonel Bean, former Bosun's mate, third class Bean, a business owner in town. Uh, and that, my friends, is something that is a black mark uh, on his name, and it's a black mark uh, when he represents himself as an ambassador and a former public servant in Hampton. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. New business. Um, I, I'm oh. not, I haven't talked. Yeah, well, just to point out, Fred did graduate from West Point, for anyone that thinks he didn't go to college or whatever, um, which for whatever that means. Um, on, I went to the library to read it, too, because I heard people talking about the uh, editorial or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I made a point right before this meeting to go and, and read it. Um, and I just want to say that... Uh, I think that, you know, it's been discussed here. I, for one, who have voted to go along with the lawsuit, I'm hoping that it will end up in med med mediation. Um, I think it's the way to go. Um, I do, and I've talked to people today when I went to the gym, people were asking about it. Um, you know, I feel that after having been here for 14 years, the state doesn't come. And they've never really come and met and talked to the Board of Selectmen. That's why I think that this, uh, and I, I tell everyone that when I see it referred to here from Mark Gerald, it's referred to as a complaint more than a lawsuit. Um, 
And I do think the ultimate goal, as far as I'm concerned, is to have some type of mediation. Um, and uh, so I think already the state has been doing little things uh, that they weren't even doing before, like uh, plowing the uh, North Beach seawall, which it's amazing. Uh, every time I leave my house, I look to see how many people are walking on it when there were times when it was completely clear when there was snow in the street and that. It's amazing how many people use it. It's one of the most popular places to walk <coughs> in Hampton. But for the last, uh, they did it a couple of times maybe last year, and maybe a time one time the year before, but they seem to be doing it every month now, or I mean every snowstorm now, and I think that's good. So I think they're, they are trying. I see them trying a little harder. Uh, so maybe when we get to a point where there is some mediation, they'll be willing to come and talk here to this board. That's what has not happened. It's not happened for the last 14 years. I don't think we've had any, um, uh, uh, any other way to go but to do this. And I'm hoping that they will come and talk. I saw that the governor was down there um, at the statue yesterday or the day before. Um, and it's nice, but uh, we've had other governors that have come here and uh, he could talk off the cuff even uh, and give us some respect here, but he doesn't. And um, I think that that's where we need to go here. I've spent... Uh, 10 years at the Hampton Beach Area Commission. I don't see anything happening there uh, as far as uh, uh, bringing the town together with the state, even though it's been talked about it. There's been discussion about the sidewalks that's been fought over and over and over again, where there were many people that didn't want to go along with it. And eventually, uh, we made some agreements, but that was probably, I don't know, four years ago. Nothing's happened. There's no nothing to talk about. The sidewalks look worse now than ever. Uh, uh, the way it's gone at the Hampton Beach Area Commission, I as a member, I just, it's hard for me to believe what's gone on there. Um, I'm all for better things to happen, so I, I can't go against what's been decided, but I see things taken out that are important. And, um, I think that there needs to be some type of conversation. There is absolutely zip amount of conversation with the state. And that's why this uh, situation has go, had to go to this point. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it is a complaint. And I'm looking forward to mitigation. Thank you. Mediation, I mean to say, not mitigation.